the Gorilla. The M SR6 Shinobi Gorilla Guitars, man. Um, so let's talk about this guitar, shall we? We we bought this uh, a little over a year ago, right? And I haven't had it on the channel in quite a while. And uh, so let's talk about that story. We'll go over the specs first, then we'll talk about that story. So the specs are going to be a roasted or Tor 5, whatever the fuck it's called, uh, maple neck and solid all the way through the body and then the black portions here are painted basswood so you got basswood wings and a solid neck through body uh it's roasted maple i think it's torrified maple i think it's the same thing i don't really know uh the fretboard i believe is ebony it is not rich light it is not quite dark enough to be rich light at least i don't think uh it does have a tusk nut um locking tuners one pickup, one volume knob, and a TOM style bridge. Now, there is quite a bit of noise. So I do have some foam to help knock that down on both the nut and the bridge side. The pickup that comes with it is a Seymour Duncan um, Black Winter. Now I did swap it out. I have a DiMarzio Evolution. The reason I chose the Evolution is because it's very similar in tone to the Black Winter, only it's not as high and brittle. So. For me, this was a better fit. Uh, the amp that we were using in the beginning was the Victory Super Kraken, and I was boosting it with uh, the Super Overdrive, the SD1. But let's talk about the story, shall we? So when I got the guitar, it's been a, a little over a year, year and a half ago. Um, I got it when it first came out. It was about $1,000 US at the time. Uh, of course, inflation, economics, and things like that. The price has gone up now. Uh, but anyway, so I got mine. Um, it came in, and it was pretty good. I was really happy with it. Uh, it did have a pretty good fret job. Over time, that became uh, a very big problem. Uh, the bottom, I had chipped it. There was one spot that I noticed I had nicked it. Uh, but over time, that ended up being a problem as well. The entire corner here had started flaking all the way across. Um, so, you know, I sent this to uh, truck driver Sean. Uh, he wanted to check out the Shinobi because it was one of the new series. And I think at the time he was playing his uh, Smoke, his Gorilla Smoke, uh, which is a phenomenal guitar. I've yet to play it, but uh, it, it looks incredible. So he's also had a couple other ones. But anyway, so I figured, you know what? I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to let you check it out. Tell me your opinions on it, and we'll go from there. And he kind of noticed the same thing. The, the paint was flaking pretty bad, um, and the fret job had started to kind of go down pretty bad uh so the fret sprout was really rough and with the fret sprouting the burrs were noticeable a lot so we talked to gus well i talked to gus uh and then um you know gus has been doing this a long time and so gus said look just send it back um you know and, and we'll go from there so sean sent the guitar off to him uh because it was in his possession so gus gets the guitar and you know, I'm not saying everybody's perfect. No company is perfect. Uh, but it's what companies do once they realize there's an issue that separates them from everybody else. And in this case, there I, I guess there was a bad employee. Um, you know, QC somehow got missed. Um, at least on mine, it was a lemon. Gus did admit to that. He apologized profusely. Um, you know, Gus can be a little stubborn at times. You know, he's been doing it. So, of course, everybody takes pride in what they do, and they don't want it to be wrong. But, you know, Gus was like, look, I'm sorry it's messed up. So... He repainted the entire guitar. Um, he stripped it down, he repainted the whole thing, and he personally redid all of the frets himself uh, as well. So, you know, it's it's pretty much a whole new guitar. And, you know, for, for the headache that I had to go through, he actually upgraded to the new style locking tuners from Gorilla. So it's the Gorilla locking tuners. Now the old pair, uh, I didn't like at all. They were a pain in the ass. Uh, it's the old school style where you had to, you know, untwist them at the top, but, um, you know, now the guitar is back and, and Gus apologized. He, he took care of it and fixed it and made it right. He made it to his standards and I couldn't appreciate it anymore. I mean, that to me is what separates a good quality company from some of the other companies. Um, not very many people are doing that. And I think that's a lost thing. So kudos to Gus and Gorilla Guitars for stepping up and taking care of their customers. I really appreciate it. So now that it's back, it's been a beautiful thing to play with. I've had it about two and a half months, um, two, two and a half months, give or take. And it's been a joy to play, especially now that I swapped the pickup out. It's definitely been a little bit better uh, tone-wise. So 
We're definitely going to have to break it in and use it some more and get this back into the rotation because it is a gem. So, Gorilla Guitars, thank you for fixing my issues uh, and noticing, you know, the faults. But, man, let's how loud that is. So, it resonates pretty good, as you can tell. But, we're definitely going to have to check them out. We're going to have to order another one. I want to compare a different model, a different price point, and see how well it stacks up against uh i wouldn't say it's an entry level guitar but i maybe it's their entry level i don't know you guys tell me anybody out there got any gorilla guitars i know sean's got a couple and he speaks extremely highly of them uh and that's actually what led me to a gorilla i'd never heard of them until that point but anyways tell me what you think catch you on the next one